are AIB models really that much better than the reference cards, or are they just a giant cash grab? Let's talk about it. Before that, make sure to subscribe and click the bell icon so you never miss another video. So before the launch of any new series of graphics cards, a lot of people start to get really excited about various different versions of the specific GPU that they're going to be looking for, whether it be some sort of like Asus Strix, you know, EVGA 4, the Win 3, or potentially maybe even a Gigabyte Aorus version of that specific GPU that they're looking for. There may be various different reasons as to why they believe that that specific version of that specific GPU is going to be so much better. But in reality, you know, are these AIB cards, especially the top end AIB cards with these incredible PCBs really that much better than the reference edition or are they no better and are you just wasting your money well Let's go ahead and talk about that. So I, because I run a YouTube channel and I need to get a lot of B-roll of different video cards and I also help my friends get their hands on graphics cards, have been able to get my hands, at least for a short period of time, on a lot of various different AIB cards as well as reference or founders edition cards to do some short testing on them and get some footage of them. And so over the years, I have definitely tested a lot of various different graphics cards, especially recently. And I think I've come to a conclusion that is gonna shock a lot of people when it comes to AIB cards and my conclusion is that actually I do think the AIB cards are a huge waste of money at least on the Nvidia side when you compare them to the Founders Edition models I mean especially if you take a look at something like the RTX 3090 the 3090 Founders Edition has a fantastic cooler has a fantastic PCB and overall it's just a great card that I think on average absolutely destroys all the AIB cards that are an option now you take a look at the 3080 and 3080 Ti yes those coolers aren't quite as good and you may be able to find some AIB cards cards that beat them in specific areas. Um, maybe you can find an AIB card that cools a little bit better or something like that or has a better PCB. And so if you want to take that AIB card and throw it in some sort of water cooling loop, then maybe that is going to be the best way for you to go. But overall, I actually do think that the Founders Edition versions of the cards are actually the best way to go, whether or not you're going to be running it stock or if you're going to be throwing it on water. Because personally, at least in my experience, now I don't know if this is just me getting incredibly lucky with all the Founders Edition cards that I've been testing recently recently, but for at least for me personally, and I've definitely seen other people talk about this online, I have seen much better clock speeds out of the Founders Edition cards on the Nvidia side than versus the AIB cards, which leads me to believe that there is a possibility that the Founders Edition GPUs do have binned silicon and that the AIB cards actually get the worst silicon. Now, is this 100% something that I can confirm? No, I have not tested enough of these cards to say for sure that that is the case, but at least for, for me personally, I have definitely noticed like 100 megahertz plus better clock speeds out of the Founders Edition cards, which again makes the AIB cards basically completely irrelevant because no matter how good their PCB is, no matter how good the cooling method is on these cards, they are never going to be able to match the what I do believe is better silicon on the Founders Edition cards. But actually, guys, that's only one reason as to why I believe that, you know, buying an AIB version of a GPU that you're looking for could actually be a giant waste of your money. The second reason we have to talk about is, well, they cost a lot more. So a lot of these AIB cards are going to cost anywhere from like, you know, a couple hundred dollars more to maybe even like nearly a thousand dollars more, depending on what graphics card you are looking at, at least in the, um, you know, in the recent past here, because in, in the, uh, you know, distant past, AIB cards were actually very competitive in terms of their price. But ever since the pricing of GPUs has gotten absolutely out of control, if you have any way of getting your hands on a Founders Edition card today, I would definitely recommend that over getting an AIB card because, for example, a Founders Edition RTX 3080, if you have, you know, en enough luck to actually try and get one, is supposed to be $700. Meanwhile, the AIB cards are often well over a thousand dollars. With the 3090, it's supposed to be fifteen hundred dollars. They are often well over two thousand dollars now for an AIB 3090. So obviously, if you're talking about basically no performance increase, or actually even in some cases getting worse performance out of the AIB cards, especially when you look at the 3090 cards, it doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Especially if you take a look at the 3090 to be spending like five hundred to eight hundred dollars more to be getting worse performance, worse cooling and much, much more noise out of your graphics card. So yeah, that doesn't make any sense whatsoever. But finally, the final reason as to why I actually do believe that in general, AIB cards do often tend to be, at least in the recent past, a huge waste of money is because I think that overall, a lot of these AIB cards, especially when you start going
going beyond the RTX 3080 level actually don't have very good coolers or they're not making very good contact or something is going on that's actually making them not cool your GPU very well whatsoever, especially if you take a look at the 3080 Ti and the 3090. What you're going to notice is that a lot of these cards are going to be getting really, really hot. In fact, you know, honestly, outrageously hot. When they take a look at the Strix RTX 3090, the one that I had, I had to turn the uh, fan speeds way up just to keep it under 80 degrees Celsius. And guys, it was actually very difficult to keep it under 80 degrees Celsius. Meanwhile, the 3090 Founders Edition honestly didn't have too much of a hard time keeping it under 60 degrees Celsius. So that is a massive, massive difference. Then you take a look at something like the RTX 3080 Ti for the Win 3 Ultra, which I recently was testing. And to get the fan speeds down to an, a, a level that was acceptable with open back headphones on, I actually was reaching up to 88 degrees Celsius at 95% power limit. So I wasn't even at 100% power limit and it was just getting way, way, way too hot. The clock speeds were dropping as low as 1800 megahertz. I switch over to, you know, putting it on water and suddenly now we're down to like 55 degrees Celsius. We're over 2.1 gigahertz on the clock speeds and we're at, you know, uh, 450 watts versus 380 watts that I could barely handle on the AIB cooler. So I think that overall, especially when you take a look at the higher end cards, when you start to look at the AIB models, I honestly would say this, if you have no other option but to buy an AIB model, obviously go for that. And there are some cards out there that have pretty decent coolers. I think that the Gigabyte versions of like the RTX 3070 and 3080 especially actually do have a pretty good cooler on them that can handle the RTX 3070 and 3080 with no problem. I also have a friend who has a 3080 Ti uh, Gigabyte version and he claims that the cooler on that does a pretty good job as well. So I think there are some versions out there that I haven't tested personally that do actually do a pretty good job of keeping the GPUs cool. But overall, I think that when you start to look at the higher end cards, um, the the, the AIB models tend to start to, it, it seems like they're kind of cheaping out and they're just trying to get as much of your money as they possibly can with putting as little effort into the GPU as they possibly can to try and extract, again, as much revenue from the product as they can possibly get away with. So personally, again, I, what I would recommend is if you have no other choice, yes, go for an AIB model. But if you do have a choice, if you're lucky and you have a choice to buy a reference model or a founder's edition model, just save your money, go with the Founders Edition model. In a worst case scenario, uh, the AIB model maybe might be able to sustain slightly higher clock speeds, or maybe it'll be slightly cooler depending on what type of Founders Edition card you get. But in a you know best case scenario, the Founders Edition card might actually be cooler quieter and clock much higher. So honestly, guys, yeah, personally, I think the AIB cards are mostly a waste of money nowadays. I think these companies really aren't worth anybody fanboying over. The only reason as to why you might, you know, uh, like one certain AIB over another is simply down to how good their customer service is. For example, I, you know, despite the fact that I think the For the Win 3 cooler isn't good beyond an RTX 3080, I don't think it's enough to cool these cards. Um, I actually do like EVGA because I think they have good customer service. So if there's something like that, that you like about a company, hey, that's all well and good, but if it comes down to performance and cooling, I don't think it's worth spending your money on an AIB card now, and it probably won't be any time in the future. But hey, that's just what I think. Do you think it's worth paying for an AIB model, or do you think you should save your money and go with a Founders Edition? Let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments below, and of course, I'll see you in the next video. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so, AMD and NVIDIA get more stock. Also, if you want to see more, click here. You won't be disappointed.